In this video, we'll show you some of the new tools that help Fusion 6 perform stereoscopic projects. To begin with, we'll load two still images from the file browser and rename them to left and right for clarity. We like to put the loader containing the left eye above the loader for the right eye, but that's more a matter of taste. The important thing is maintain a consistent approach. We'll display the left eye in the view and then the right eye, and you can see the offset between the two cameras. So this is obviously meant to be a stereo project. But they're stills, so we'll add a stereo mix material, and we'll connect the inputs. When we hold the control key down while making the connections, Fusion displays a menu with the names of the two inputs, making it easier to select the right one. We're going to apply this material to an image plane. So we have a material that contains both eyes, but when we view the image, we only see the left eye, and that's because Fusion hasn't requested a stereo image yet. When we turn on the anaglyph button in the toolbar, then we can see the left eye and the right eye simultaneously. But we can adjust the convergence until we view the scene through a camera. So we go ahead and set ourselves up so we can look through the camera, and we'll adjust the Z offset so we can see everything. Now when we go into Anaglyph, we can uh, have a look at that in cross-eyed mode, or we can have a look at it as a, a Anaglyph. I personally can't use the cross-eyed mode at all. I can't seem to relax my eyes for that, so it's back to the Anaglyph mode. Note the large number of uh, supported uh, algorithms, so we're using Dubois because it seems to have the best color fidelity. Now we're going to animate our camera so, and just do a quick dolly along the z-axis. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we won't really know if we've got the right animation until we've added a renderer, so we're going to need that next. But first, we want to adjust the separation on the flower pot at the front on that table. Uh, so we're going to adjust the convergence so that both of our cameras appear to be looking at that point. And so you can see the camera has controls for both eye separation and convergence distance. Next thing we need is a renderer tool, so we'll go ahead and add that into the composition. Now in this case we're going to need to render out a left eye and a right eye so we can do 2D effects later. So we add our renderer, then we tell it to render the left eye, and then we copy it and we paste an instance into the composition. We'll de-instance the eye control and we'll tell this one to render the right eye. And so you can see the um, flower pot in the center stays still and the rest of the image is giving us uh, proper separation for left and right eye. Now when we're in 2D, we're still going to want to be able to go into anaglyph mode from time to time and check to see what things look like. So we connect both uh, eyes into the anaglyph tool, and we'll set that to Dubois mode as well. And we'll hit play to see what that looks like. So by viewing the anaglyph, we can see the separation of the red and the cyan. And unfortunately, we can also see that when we animated a camera, we didn't really get the framing quite right. So we'll just go in and adjust that offset. Now for our 2D effects, we're going to want to uh, put in a, a bit of a soft glow on there. And to do that, we need to make sure we've got the same effect on the left eye and the right eye. So we're going to use instancing again. And this can be very handy when you're dealing with two streams for uh, the left eye and the right eye. So uh, we'll start off by just double checking the camera pan is right on all the frames. Excellent. So we'll start off by adding a channel boolean. We'll set that to negative. And what that'll do is uh, allow us to put our glow starting in the blacks instead of on the whites. We'll use a, another channel boolean to invert that or negative it back to the original state. And then we insert a soft glow in between those two tools. And when we view the final channel boolean, we can now adjust the threshold on the soft glow. And you can see we have a glow that sort of starts from the blacks and expands out from there. Now we need to do exactly the same thing to the second eye. So we uh, copy those three tools, we paste it as an instance, which you can see from the green lines that connect them all, and then we simply replace the original connection to the anaglyph tool. And so we've now got instanced uh, copies of the soft glow, so any change we make to any of the tools on the left eye will automatically apply to the right eye. Excellent. Now, unfortunately, we also want to change the convergence on this shot, so that instead of having the uh, flower pot in the center, as our point of convergence, we actually want to make the uh, chair the convergence instead. So we've added a transform tool, and we're going to run the uh, user control script. We'll tell it we want to create a new control called eye separation. We're going to place that uh, slider control on the controls tab of our tool, and we'll set the range to negative one to one. So uh, that will allow us to create a new control that appears on the controls for this transform. By clicking the equal sign in the x coordinate of the uh, center, we can now add an expression. We're going to change the x axis so that it's 0.5, or the center of the image, minus the value of the eye separation. 
Then we add another transform tool. And then again, with this transform, we're going to connect it to the other eye. But then this time, when we add the expression to center, we're actually going to set the coordinate of the x-axis to be 0.5 plus the value of that eye separation. And what that's going to do is every time we make an adjustment to the uh, x -axis, the eye separation, we're going to offset the two images along the x-axis in opposite directions. So one is going to be 0.5 minus eye separation, one will be 0.5 plus the transform's eye separation. So when we use those in the inputs of the anaglyph tool, we'll have to view that result, there we go, and we make the adjustment to the eye separation, you can see how that's working. So we'll just adjust that so that the chair now appears to be the one that's at our point of interest and that should do the job.